Hey guys, thank you very much for being here again tonight. I thought we had another spectacular show. You know, it's um, incredibly difficult to go back to back two nights in a row, uh, keep the energy and the and the, the spectacle and and everything about it at that level, um, following up on on something that was as good as last night. Um, but I really thought they did it. I thought the talent delivered tonight, um, and and really put something out over the. Incredibly special, from uh, you know from the the pre-show with Brizango and uh, Killian and, and Drake, which was a really fun match. To uh, Poppy, who I would like to thank for being here, uh, you know Grammy nominated artist covering Adam Ant's "Stand and Deliver," which is just one of those songs that gets caught yet, then you can't get it out. Um, and then and then playing an original song of hers that hadn't been heard before, say cheese. I thought she had a spectacular performance. She's a, a great, um, just visual artist to me that just fits the brand very well, um, and that sort of kind of become family in NXT. So it was great to have her here. Um, I thought the cruiserweight championship match between Escobar and Jordan Devlin was spectacular. This is one of those nights where there are winners and losers clearly. Um, to the matches, but there are no winners and there are no losers, man. Everybody wins here. It's, it's, um, I thought they both had a spectacular performance. They both came out of this looking phenomenal. Um, Santos Escobar is the undisputed champion, but uh, Jordan Devlin certainly proving uh, absolutely one of the best in the world at what he does. Uh, Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart, Candice LeRae, Indy Hartwell, putting on a, just a great uh, tag team match for the Women's Tag Championships. Ember and Shotzi retaining uh, in what was a spectacular match. And um, just, I, I thought they did a phenomenal job. And I'm sure it's not the last time those two will be facing the, the Women's Tag Team Division heating up. And we are certainly turning it into be something um, more than, uh, you know, that, that I, I, it's, it's hard to say that the, the depth of the women's um, Division here is just it's it's amazing and um, this is this is a part of it you know Indy Hartwell just kind of coming into her own Candice obviously one of the veterans but they're just putting on a hell of a match and the tag team division is heating up I expect great things and I'm sure it won't be the last time we see these four um, Bronson and Johnny after Bronson's spectacular night last night coming in and uh, getting in there with Johnny who just just never. Never let you down. Johnny's just consistent as consistent can be. Johnny Takeover, um, putting on a, a master class with Bronson Reed, uh, retaining the North American title. Finn and Kerry and Cross. Uh, you know, Cross having an unbelievable setback, really, when you break it down. You come into a place and you get everything. Man, everything is going your way. And it, it just, you know, um, it's all there for you. And in the blink of an eye, it just all goes away. But to put that aside, grind, get it all back, um, like he did, and I, and I mean that on the on on the, uh, the 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 reality side of what we do and the show side of what we do, is just a phenomenal feat. And then Finn Balor, I'll you know, say it time and time again, is is reinventing yourself, recreating yourself is not an easy task, and what he has done here in NXT and will continue to do here in NXT is just truly remarkable. Um, Spectacular match, and then Kyle and Adam, just masterclass in storytelling to me, um, phenomenal. Both guys um, just beat the tar out of each other. Uh, we put them both in ambulances at the end just to check everybody out, make sure everybody was good. Uh, they both checked out fine. Uh, I just got a phone call a few minutes ago. Everybody is good. Everybody is healthy. No injuries um, as of right now. So. So everything is solid. But with that, um, I'm going to mention one more thing before um, before I uh, open it up to questions, and that really just is I want to uh, mention Brian James, Road Dog. Uh, just is uh, he's been home last few days. He is recovering, um, you know, but, he, but he's healthy and uh, he, he's he's uh, good and um, recovering at home, doing well. Um, we had him set up so he was on headset uh, over the last two days and 
you know, kind of being involved and in, in stuff. And as he gets his strength back and everything feeling good, he'll be back at it and, and uh, back to being the road dog in no time. So we just wanted to, to I just wanted to give a shout out to him and uh, we greatly miss him here and uh, he'll be back soon enough, And uh, but he's doing well. So with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. Uh, right now it's just me. Sean stepped out of the room for a second, but he'll be right back in. We still have a little bit of things going on here, so uh, I'll open up to questions. Thank you. Hey, folks, you... These are rules. One question per hour, please. Thank you. If you would like to signal with questions, please press star one on your touchtone telephone. If you're joining us today, use a speakerphone. Please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Again, that is star one if you would like to ask questions. Our first question will come from Michael Morales Torres with Luca Libra Online. Gentlemen, good evening. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing very good. How are you? Everything good here in Puerto Rico, Paul. First of all, congratulations on such an amazing show. Uh, you guys killed it again. My question is regarding Adam Cole. Uh, we saw an incredible masterpiece, as you mentioned, from him and Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, Kyle got the victory, which, in my opinion, was, was a great decision. But uh, where does this, uh, you know, leave Adam Cole? Like, is he getting a call from Raw or SmackDown? Is he staying on NXT? What's Adam Cole's future uh, with NXT? I, I mean, I would advise you to watch on Tuesday. You know, I don't know if you've heard or not, but this Tuesday we start on uh, USA. It's our, our new night, and it'll be spectacular. So I think all things will be revealed then. But... Uh, yeah, it's just a funny thing. Um, I tell you, you drop you, you drop a fall around here, man, and just yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah. people start right, right, right yeah. up when you like it or not. Yeah, one loss, you're yeah, out. Really crickets. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think you know, um, it's a it's a funny thing when you when you succeed here and you do really well here for a fairly long period of time. There are moments in time where you're telling stories, and then you know something definitive happens, like tonight, and and people think that's well, that's the end of it. Certainly, that's the end of the book. That's the end of the chapter. That's that's the move on. It's not that case at all. You know, um, if if that were the case, then you know half this roster would be leaving tonight. Um, and it's not the case at all. It's it's the it's a chapter in the story. It's a chapter in in the saga that they're telling, and uh, Kyle O'Reilly proving himself against the man that that said he was the leader of the undisputed era and was just dragging them all along, and were just his uh, his lackeys. Um, Proving not so much of a lackey anymore, but if I'm Adam Cole, I can't imagine that that sits very well with him. So I would imagine that is not the end of the story. Yeah, and this is right. This is taking Kyle O'Reilly to the next level. I think any, everybody would agree that Adam Cole has certainly been in the top level for over a year here now, um, and I think now Kyle O'Reilly has put himself on that same level as Adam Cole. Uh, I can't see that stopping. No, no. Thank you very much. Wishing you success on WrestleMania and this next Tuesday on NXT. Thank you. So much. And our next question will come from Connor Casey with ComicBook.com. Hey, Connor. Hey, Connor. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Um, you yeah. mentioned the uh, the challenges of putting on a two night show like this. Um, can we expect? a two night takeover to be something that starts happening once a year, or do you prefer going back to just having these on one night? You know, I, I, I don't really know. I mean, even, even, um, you know, WrestleMania last year, WrestleMania this year being two nights, um, uh, takeover being two nights this year, it, it sort of came into the right timing and the right position of where we, you know, needed to be with it and, and be able to deliver the way we wanted to. I, I, but it's hard, you know, it's it's hard to tell what's going to be next month in this pandemic world and with everything else going on. Um, as things open back up, we'll have to see what next year brings. Next year, WrestleMania, as we move into Dallas and we see how that goes. Is is that a one-night event, a two-night event? If it's a one-night event, or do we move back to the Saturday and and make that something spectacular? Do we move into the, you know, to the two-night slot someplace else? I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, time will tell, but th that's the great thing about what we do. We can be nimble and, 
and move into to what we want it to be uh, when the time comes, and um, you know we'll try to make the best decision for uh, the WWE universe and for for our fans everywhere. Pretty proud of the fact that we can have two nights and two strong cards. Yes, yeah. pretty impressive for the brand that started what a year and a half ago. Y- yeah, I mean, I mean on and, live yeah, TV. And in, in that manner and yeah. two hours live TV. Yeah, to to. To have a, a brand strong enough that you could put on this level of show, start to finish, main events, two nights, uh, you know, multiple matches that could have been main events, two nights in a row, multiple shows that could have stood on their own as a takeover. You know, last night could have stood on its own as a takeover, period. It absolutely did. Tonight, same thing. Um, the cards were, were deep and thick, and it wasn't everybody. Um, so, you know, th- that's... That's a statement in and of itself. So we'll see where it goes, though, in the future. Awesome. Well, thanks for another great show. Thanks, Connor. And our next question comes from John Alba with Spectrum News 13. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. As always, great show tonight. Uh, the build to the main event on television and presentation was really, really strong, and you had the security guards out there ahead of time. And I noticed from watching that a lot of those people uh, that were among that security staff were part of that big new NXT class you guys brought in, which a lot of people have spoken pretty highly about. And since you guys have worked so closely with those individuals, I was wondering if any in particular have really stood out in the early goings here uh, during their time at the PC. Yeah, a lot of those guys are moonlighting now at – at a security company next door, and we're using them as, uh, <laughs> as security on a fairly regular basis. Look, if you're going to have uh, six foot, two hundred sixty pound guys standing around, you got to use them for security. Um, oh boy, a lot of them. Uh, it's a funny thing. We were just talking about this the other day. You know, when we got into the to the COVID environment and pandemic hits, and you start to look at you can't train. For a long period of time, you know, it's been about a year and a half that we really didn't have the facility to train and um, keeping people healthy because the Capitol Center or or what was Raw SmackDown and, and all that was our TV facility, you know, was it was our training center, um, and we lost all that. Just recently, we've we've been able to start that again and be able to start training on a, on a on a large basis. But when you started to look at that from a year and a half ago, there were moments where you were going like, Ooh, man, um, there's some talent, but you know, when, when you start to get into the, we, you constantly want to have the veterans and the people that are TV ready and then almost TV ready and then not quite TV ready. And then people that are just getting started, maybe they just stepping in the ring for the first time. And so that you're constantly building that upwards trajectory. And when you started to look at the bottom of it, it was pretty thin. Um, but that was mostly because COVID prevented us from bringing people in. So they were in the pipeline to come in here and we couldn't bring them in. And then all of a sudden they came in all at once. And when you start looking at some of the athletes that, have, that are, are walking in the door um, here, um, it's, it, it's impressive. It's impressive. And I can tell you watching them train, um, you know, there there are certain athletes that come in here where you're just like jaw dropping. You know, first few times they get in there, and sometimes they're jaw dropping athletes, and they don't bring the charisma level, or they don't bring the other things, and that's stuff that you have to work on, or, or vice versa. This crop, I can tell you right now, they're all full of personality. They're all got massive amounts of charisma, and they're all just like crazy athletes. And I'm talking about men and women. Um, so, you know, I went from a few months ago of being like... Say the last two months. Yeah, yeah. You know, Sean was just saying the last two months. It's like, you know, three months ago maybe we were looking at it going, Phew, you know, but, but there was a big pipeline coming in. And then when that pipeline got here, all of a sudden when you saw those people walk in the door hungry and get in the ring, you were like, wow, um, okay, yeah, future's bright. Um, we're good. Uh, it's just, it's been impressive. I don't know that I've seen a more impressive starting group in a long period of time than what's in here right now. And hungry, 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 hungry. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. And our next question will come from Jason Powell with Pro Wrestling Net. Hey, guys. My question is for Sean. 
Uh, your ups and downs have been well chronicled over the years. How would a 20-something Sean have handled life at the Performance Center? Were you just too much of a free spirit, or do you think that the way things that you guys do there uh, might have actually been just what you needed at that point in your life? Yeah, you know what? It's funny. Uh, I've been asked that before, and I do. I don't know. I, I, I think me at that age, the structure would have helped me a great deal. Um, especially, again, I don't know, again, we got people, and given my, my past and everything else, we talk very real with everybody. Um, and that is something that I think would have helped. So I do, I think, I appreciate the question because it is it's something I've thought about before. And I do, I really think I could have used this kind of structure, this kind of, you know, team, this kind of support. Uh, people, again, you know, I don't know, not <laughs> again, not telling you this is cool when it really isn't, you know, not being afraid to be honest with you, to be open with you, um, and, and, and letting you know uh, when you were screwing up. So yeah, I do, I really think that something like this, and that's what I love about this place, again, is that everybody is really hands-on here. It gets very personal here. We're allowed to have relationships with these young men and women where you can really get to know them, and that helps. It helps a great deal. And that's it's uh, certainly for somebody like me who I uh, I've always said when I did this job I it, it wasn't just business to me. It was very personal to me because it was uh, had two loves in my life wrestling <laughs> and the woman I'm still married to, and uh, you know again it's one of those things that that I I think it would have really helped to have people uh, be open and honest and support you. Um, as we do here. So uh, I think it's a fantastic question. I hope I, hope I answered it okay for you. You, you did. Thank I you would, for the time. I would say this knowing Sean, you know, you, you hear it a lot, and, and Vince takes a lot of unnecessary criticisms for a lot of things, but, like, you hear a lot, especially from the older uh, talent that were in that period of time that Sean is talking about, where they you, you'll hear Vince talk to you almost like a father figure. To a lot of people that didn't have that in their lives and and the reason is because Vince would there were two things that he did one he told you I believe in you yeah. and two he told you stuff, stuff straight he didn't he didn't mince words he didn't anything and sometimes you might have hated him for it in the moment but he was probably the closest thing to most guys had to a dad he told them the truth whether they wanted to hear it or not he set them straight when they needed to and he was he was a strong hand with them but he believed in them and he let them struggle and fail and succeed and all those things and he but he did it in a way that that you know you hear it all the time he was a father figure to me um i think there's so much of that here i think whether it's and i don't necessarily mean father figures but i mean that support system of people that believe in you but at the same point in time aren't here to tell you you're great don't worry about it just do whatever you want to do they're here to tell you the truth they're here to make you better. They're here to make you succeed, whether you want to hear it or not. And some people will struggle with that. Most people will thrive with it and grow from it. Um, and I and I think that's a part of it. I do agree. I think this would have been really good for somebody like Sean because it would have been a, a structured system around him as opposed to one voice. And our next question will come from Sean Ross Sapp with Fightful. Hey, Sean. hey guys, we we got news that that Walter got back the the stolen UK title earlier this month, and that you guys actually sent the person who recovered it a a signed belt, which is very nice of you guys. Is, is WWE going to take any action about this? And have you guys ever personally experienced anything like this throughout your career? Because uh, it's it's quite a wild situation. Uh, Walter is chopping people at this moment in time all across the UK trying to find who stole that title. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of red uh, bloody chests in Europe right now and when he finds out who did it, oh boy. No, um, I, that was pretty cool. I mean, it was actually a pretty cool story uh, to hear. And, um, yeah, you know, and again, I, it's funny because Walter did, he mentioned it the other day and he was talking about it and how cool he thought it was and uh, and that, of course, you know, they uh, they signed him. But I think they, yeah, I don't know if they sent him the actual one that he lost because they got made a new one. Well, I, I think um, what they did is they got the the one that was stolen back, and then they made one 
uh, with, I think, it had different plates on it or something, maybe customized. I'm, I'm, yeah, to be honest, I didn't really look at it that closely, but Walter asked me to sign it, which was part of the deal of sending it to the guy. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure exactly how the exact story went, but yeah, like Sean said, pretty cool story that they were able to recover that. And um, and I'm saying I've never, I never had mine stolen, but like back in the day, that's how, that's why all the guys uh, they carried the title. We all had the little Halliburtons. You know, and that you could back then you could check them through the machine at the airport. So you always carried it on you most of the time. Um, and I don't even me. I don't think I ever lost. I I never lost one, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's incredible. It's yeah. source. Yeah. I think Flair lost them every other week. I think so. Yeah, well. yeah that watch. Yeah. Thank you all. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Our next question will come from Gary Cassidy with Inside the Ropes. Hey, Gary. Hi, Paul. Hi, Sean. Congratulations on a fantastic second night. Um, I actually wanted to ask a little bit about someone we've seen on both nights and Pete Dunn. He obviously looks like he's set for a big future inside the ring in NXT, but I know he's been doing a fair bit of backstage and production work in NXT UK. Is that something he's been doing in the States? And is there any other active NXT stars doing that or that you've got your eye on to do that in the future? Yeah, so, you know, it's a funny thing in that backstage production work is not necessarily for everybody, right? There are certain people, I don't know. It's something for me that when I very first started and I was always fascinated with that other side of it, um, I think there are certain people that gravitate towards that and then there are certain people that have zero interest in that whatsoever. For me, the ones that have interest in it, like Pete, um, he's just a sponge. Man. He'll, he, will, uh, he will dig into every single aspect of this business and engage in it in every single way you allow him to. Like, he's just incredible. And, and to be honest, especially at such a young age, he just has an incredible mind for it. Um, but, you know, we've had... You know, Johnny Gargano produces matches sometimes, especially with the younger guys for the for other shows. And when we were on the live tours doing the, like what they would call the coconut shows in Florida, a lot of those talent, Johnny, um, Ciampa, uh, you know, uh, Candice has done it before, uh, people like that where they would, they, they would produce matches for younger talent coming up and work with them and sort of mentor them to that next level. Pete Dunn does it. Uh, Damian Priest has done it. Um, you know, di- different people. I know Finn Balor has an interest in it. Um, I think Walter's done some of that with yeah, you guys in the UK. Yep. Um, so, you know, a- any time you can do that, I-, I think it's no different than being an actor and then, you know, dabbling and directing a little. It just makes you think about it from the other side of the camera a bit differently, and it- then it makes you a better performer because of it. You yeah, know? exactly. So, yeah, because we've had a, a number of guys who have just asked, and the people who show interest in it, um, yeah, we give it a world that we're just, you know, they want to listen on the headsets, and it does. It helps them. Uh, every one of them's commented that it gives them a little bit of a better understanding from a performance standpoint of how they can accentuate, you know, everything that it is that they're doing. Um, and clearly, when you know we were in the UK, um, Pete was one of the people that showed interest in that. Lately, Walter has as well, and we're always more than happy to to certainly uh, you know give them the opportunity to to do that. And of course, uh, Pete did a phenomenal job. And then, of course, when we were beginning to transition him over here, so you aren't going to use him on TV as much over there. But while the wait was happening, we utilized him. Uh, as much as we could, and again, and we'll continue to do that with with the people that uh, show interest in that respect. Brilliant! Thank you so much, guys. Can't wait for Tuesday. And Thank you. Next, and our next question will come from Alex McCarthy with Talk Sport. Hey, Alex. Hey, guys! Great show tonight. Congratulations. Um, I wanted to touch upon. NXT UK, of course, we had Prelude tonight, but also there was a steady influence across the two nights as well with Walter, in my opinion, having the match of the week thus far. But I think we all want an NXT UK takeover at some point, given that the first three shows of those were amazing. And I know the circumstances have put us where we are now. 
June twentieth is where I believe NXT UK Takeover Dublin was set. Um, I don't know. I assume it will be a case by case basis nearer to the time, but for the second half of this year, June twenty first, I think in England things open up. Are you guys hoping to cram in? two, three, you know, how many takeovers perhaps that side of the year? And if you can't, what, what are the plans to move forward? Yeah, look, um, we, we obviously would love to do that. It, it, it comes down to a few factors, not, not just um, can we get some fans into arenas. It's just from a production standpoint, you know, we, we're bringing in talent from all over, so we, the travel has to open up the fan we have to be able to have fans in. We have to be able to bring production people around. We have to be able to get some people from here over to there, um, you know, to, to be able to do the shows. But absolutely, um, you know, I know Sean feels this way, and, and I'll let him speak on it. But for me, uh, there's there's not much more fun uh, events we do than going over there, whether it be Blackpool or, or London or... or you know any of that, and we were looking to hope to be able to get to Ireland and to Scotland and everywhere in between. Um, but the world sort of sort of shut that down for a minute. As soon as we can get back there, we absolutely will. I, I can't I can't wait to get over there. If I could uh, go over there tomorrow and and figure out a way to run a show, uh, we certainly will. So. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's the thing we've had that date there for a while. Clearly, uh, you know. We're hoping for the best, but yeah, we're just so subject to, you know, a lot of the restrictions and the way the world is right now, and it and it would be very tough. We're doing a great job of being able to, uh, you know, do our regular show, BT Studios. Uh, the partnership with them has been great, but we've, you know, we've been able to do that with half of us over here, um, and I, I wouldn't imagine we would want to be able to hear. We would want to do a takeover without us physically being able to be over there with all the production, uh, you know, aspects that are at our disposal. And so obviously, yeah, we have to wait once, like, just like we said last night, man, when the world begins to work with us, we're going to be thrilled to, to get back to business. Yeah. I've heard all about the, uh... sorry, I was going to say, I've heard all about the voice. Yeah, go ahead. I said, sorry, we just heard all about the voice of God, Shawn Michaels, during the uh, remote production. <laughs> yeah, well, I, let's, yeah, the voice of God might be a little bit rough, but it, it is. The, look, it's amazing with the technology we're thrilled about, uh, just even the hands-on experience we've gotten to have with, with the UK brand over there. But I do. I, I love going over there. I love being over There's nothing better than being over there physically with the talent. And again, like... Uh, as I referenced in one of the calls uh, earlier, you know, there's a relationship there. I absolutely love, uh, you know, the men and women that we work with over there. That's the brand that I've got to see from the ground up and working hand in hand with them from the very beginning. Um, and it's it's been fantastic to, to, to bring it back to, to BT, but it's nothing like being over there physically um, and, and getting to really, uh, you know, meet with the talent, be with them, and, of course, and be with the fans, <laughs> you know, y'all are, y'all are some of the best over there, man. And it's, and, and it is, we miss you guys very much and we can't wait to get people back in the building. And like I said, get back to business. I can only imagine what some of those crowds like that will, will, will be like over there when, when, uh, when things finally open and we can pack a place and do what we do. Uh, I want to be there for those cause they're going to be off the, the it's off the chart, uh, as far as loud and everything else. So. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Hey, NXT folks. UK has been amazing since he came back. Thank you. All right, folks, we'll do one more and we'll call it a night. Our next question will come from Nick Houseman with Wrestling Inc. Hi, Nick. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for taking the time tonight. Uh, I'll keep it kind of brief. Uh, Gable Stevenson was shown uh, in the crowd at TakeOver. Um What's his status with WWE? Is he uh, Olympic bound and WWE bound? Is he already under a contract with WWE? What, what's going on with Gable? Uh, Gable came here tonight, enjoyed the show as a guest, um, had his dad with him. You know, he just won uh, uh, NCAA championships and the, the national championships, and uh, just you know, obviously qualified for the Olympics, and that is a big uh, task at hand. So. Uh, 
you know, a huge fan of what we do. We've been talking for a long time, and, and uh, they want to come out here, you know, uh, reached out, want to come out, see TakeOver, see WrestleMania, um, and we'll see where it goes. You know, I, I don't – I would hate to say to a guy who's a junior in, in college, uh, you know, let's make some decisions in the moment while you're trying to get ready for the Olympics. You know, let's let's focus on one wonderful thing at a time. Um, he's got a bright future in anything that he decides to do, um, but he's a massive fan of what we do, and I am a massive fan, as we all are, of uh, what he can bring to the table here. And and uh, if he does make the decision to uh, to come here and and want to want to become a WWE superstar, man, he I have no doubt he will do it, do it in record time, and be amazing at it. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Great show tonight. Thank you. All right, All right guys. Uh, Conference call. I'll turn things back over to Paul to wrap things up. Yeah, thank you. Um, appreciate you guys jumping on this call and being a part of this and all the support. Uh, again, two amazing nights of takeover. We will now uh, move into tomorrow, tomorrow's SmackDown, and then this weekend for WrestleMania at Raymond James Stadium. Um, you know, I would expect, as, as excited as we were to have a, a few hundred rabid NXT fans here at the Capitol Center. Uh, 25,000 or so in Raymond James Stadium is going to be incredible. It's amazing. Can't say it enough. Amazing to have the NXT universe back here and, and be a part of what we do. So cannot cannot wait to, to have them be back and, and be out there and get everybody performing in front of them and get back to doing what we do. So, um, Man, I'm looking forward to Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then Tuesday night, yeah. NXT, um, we're starting to hold it again. A whole new chapter, yeah. um, and it's going to be great. So thank you all for the support. We'll talk soon.